Greetings, this is Farina Riamencha, half of a YouTuber, and I come to you with another reaction. This time we'll be returning uh, to. Uh, excuse me, I have to be off Elvin. Anyway, he um to to the to the uh, to the exciting videos of OSP Overly Sarcastic Productions in their latest uh video. Fable, Fables and Folktale, which is like a I'm not sure what the difference between that and miscellaneous myths are. Maybe they're just going through a new dialogue, I'm not sure. Okay. Basically, they run down through... Well, they got, it's just a summary of the different myths and stuff, and... Uh, or fable, or book tale. Maybe not something that's not quite myth yet. And this today's uh, story is is Tokyo uh, Tokoyo and the Sea Monster. I don't know anything about this. I, I cannot recall anything about this right now. Well, let's see. Uh, before we begin, please note that I do not own nor am I associated with the. Overly Sarcastic Productions YouTube channel or any other online presence they have. Well, like always, I'm just a fan sharing with my fellow fans. It's a beautiful country I'd love to visit. Japan is a beautiful country I'd love to visit someday. And that's a pretty popular sentiment yeah. out here in the West. Obviously, the global tourist appeal of an entire nation is a very complex and multifaceted affair that can't be boiled down to a single simple factor driving traffic. But, like, it's definitely anime, right? I mean, come yeah. on, at least mostly. I know correlation doesn't imply causation, oh, this but, like, we all know an yeah, well, let's say that Godzilla also some, has a little anime fan who was like, oh, I'd love to visit Japan. I've watched so much JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And I feel like that's reason. <laughs> I do have, like, already have a list of places I would want to go to. Who, Japan, including, uh, like this, uh, Naruto attraction. Mainly just photo stuff. Oh, and one place which... Are, if I go and don't take my sister, she'll probably kill me. The Fox Village. Basically a fox sanctuary where you can just walk around with the foxes. They're docile, though not quite tame yet. Oh, I'd love to visit Japan. I've watched so much JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And I feel like I that's reasonable, honestly. If you're passionate about a story, it makes sense to develop a curiosity about where that story comes from. One of the most efficient methods of cultural exchange is storytelling. It provides a window into a foreign cultural experience, and that potentially sparks increased interest in the culture from people who might otherwise never deal with it. Of course, hearing stories from a culture is not the same thing as understanding that culture, but if the stories trigger an initial interest, it can still lead to a broader, more immersive learning experience. And the process also happens in reverse. Learning about a place and culture can make you curious about its stories and Tales. One of the favorite pastimes of historical globetrotters has been going somewhere new and then documenting as many local stories as they can get their hands on. History, folk tales, mythologized combinations of the two. The fact is, people like stories, and good stories make people want to know more. Back at the turn of the 1900s, British dude Richard Gordon Smith demonstrated my point handily by spending most of his later life traveling as far east as he could manage, which, considering the alternative was living in England, makes a lot of sense. He ended up settling in Japan for a good chunk of his later years, but along the way he kept extensive journals of his travels and later collected some of the stories he'd into an anthology of folk tales called Ancient Tales and Folklore of Japan, which is where we find the story we'll be talking about today. Unfortunately, this is the only place we can find this specific story, and while it seems pretty unlikely that Smith fully made it up, it isn't specifically corroborated anywhere else I can find. So, with the understanding that a British oh, tourist uh, isn't going to have the most accurate and cultural... Oh, this reminds me of her miscellaneous myth video about the time... <laughs> time, uh, she heard a story that Loki and... And they'll fight each other as seals, which turns out to be someone's interpretation of a mural of depicting uh, uh, legends and stuff, which uh, could be not most accurate. Basically, someone I won't know. It's someone translating a song by someone who saw uh, a account of someone who saw a pit or a song, song, which was created by someone who was looking at murals. But she couldn't resist that art that say having a thumbnail of that, so, yeah. 
Really nuanced understanding of this tale, let's get into it. So our story begins with Hojo Takatoki, last regent of the Kamakura Shogunate, exiling a samurai named Oribe Shima to the faraway Oki Islands for an unspecified crime. Hey, Shogunate on. exiling a samurai named into it. So our story begins with Hojo Takatoki, last regent of the Kamakura Shogunate, exiling a samurai named Oribe Shima to the faraway. Oh, no wait, is that Oberishima. Shima. Yeah, no, that sounds familiar. Oki Islands for an unspecified I I crime. This banishment unsurprisingly separates Oribeshima from his daughter Tokoyo, who is none too pleased at this new arrangement and resolves to get him back no matter what. She sells her belongings, heads to port, tries and fails to charter a boat, and then just takes one instead. She manages to get to the Oki Islands, but has no luck finding her father. Nobody knows where he is, and even if they did, he's been exiled, and that means helping him out is a no-no in general. Tokoyo runs herself pretty ragged trying to find any sign of her dad's whereabouts, and eventually she's pretty solidly worn out. One night, she fires off a quick prayer at a shrine and lies down to sleep but wakes up soon after to find a praying priest and a crying little girl at the water's edge, which is never a good combination. The priest goes to push the girl in, but Tokoyo rushes in to save her, and the priest very quickly explains himself. See, there's a sea monster down there who demands that they sacrifice a girl once a year, or he'll batter the island with terrible storms. Tokoyo is about fed up with her current situation and decides she's got nothing left to lose, so she may as well kill the sea monster, right? You know, when you got a free afternoon. She or gives the priest a letter to give to her father, sticks a knife between her teeth, well, and she, dives she, in. She swims to the bottom of the sea without too much difficulty. Basically, her idea is eat, she'll either kill her or she dies and be and is to sacrifice. Uh, thanks to her uh, early years pearl diving with the locals in her hometown and finds a luminous sea without Sorry. too much difficulty. Apparently, thanks to her early years pearl diving with the locals in her hometown and finds a luminous cave with a dude in it. But here's a twist: the dude is not, as she initially believes, the sea monster. On closer inspection, it's actually a wooden statue of Hojo Takatoki himself, the man who exiled her father. She initially considers taking out some well-deserved pent-up aggression on it, but decides to rescue it instead and lugs it out of the cave. But that's when the sea monster shows shows up. Weighed down by a statue and, lest we forget, at the bottom of the ocean, Tokoyo looks like pretty easy prey. And that is the sea monster's first and last mistake, as Tokoyo nails it right in the eye and follows up by stabbing it in the heart. Unsurprisingly, it dies. Tokoyo drags the statue and the corpse of the sea monster to the surface and is hailed as a hero by the locals, presumably after first ruling out the possibilities that she's some kind of physical god or gumption-powered anime protagonist. Word of her bravery and sick gains makes its way all the way back to Hojo Takatoki himself, who happens to have recovered from a lasting illness at the exact moment Tokoyo pulled his statue out of the water. So the obvious conclusion is that the statue was in some way cursing him, and Tokoyo accidentally saved him from a slow and painful death. In gratitude, he immediately orders her father to be released from prison and exile, and Tokoyo is finally reunited with her dad. They return home, safe and secure in the knowledge that Tokoyo is a stone-cold, monster-slaying badass with lungs of titanium. It's not directly stated in story, but we can infer that Beowulf is off in the corner furiously taking notes. Up where the mountains meet the heavens above, above. Oh. out where the lightning splits the oh. sea, I, was wondering if you ever I get could swear song. there is someone somewhere watching me. Through the wind and the chill and the rain and the storm and the flood, I can feel his approach like a fire in my blood. Okay. No, I... Wrath. Okay, follow the instructions of why I press. Not what you think I do. Okay, well that was that bit. Uh, now for a bonus thing, uh, they had they recently released a short, or I think it was recently. Hang on. Oh. I'm so happy. The most frustrating part of Athenian history is that they are almost as great. As Good. Almost as great as they're constantly. The most frustrating part of Athenian history is that they are almost. Yeah, this is another reason why I actually don't I'm not a fan of the shorts and definitely not the story new things they're doing to emulate TikTok. Not only can you not run that stuff, but the the volume is, is either on or off. There's no altering it. I hear my vow, I'm not making shorts, and I'm definitely not making stores, which you can't even pause, because if you press the thing, it'll just go to the next video in the story segment. Oh, I'll just make a regular video that like, which you can still rewind and pause. Well? Almost as great as they're constantly insisting they are. Athens lacks the ancient prestige of cities like Sparta and Thebes, but their big break came when they single-handedly stopped the Persian invasion at the Battle of Marathon. And by the well, time they... um, aborting that. Mission failed due to technical difficulty, guys. Oh. 
Well, anyway, I thank you for joining for this short uh, video. This is Freena Rudy Mantra, half elven YouTuber. I wish you good fortune in the quest of life.